Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome for uh, another episode uh, of uh, our Idego talk series. And today we will talk, uh, actually Giuseppe uh, will talk um, about uh, why you should not hate your project uh, manager. And Giuseppe will introduce himself better. Um, so quick introduction from my side. Uh, we are from Idego Group. Uh, we are a um, Polish uh, software house with headquarters in uh, Gdynia. But to be honest, uh, we work from different uh, parts of Poland and, uh, and not only. <laughs> so uh, the remote work is, uh, is possible and, uh, and easy for us. Uh, okay. So uh, why we, we are here, um, we like to share uh, knowledge and we have a lot of experts uh, on our board. So here we are. And if you want to know uh, a little bit more about us, uh, just uh, I just left you um, links for our website and uh, our social media. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to... Uh, take more time uh, so check uh, the links um, below and uh, that's that's it from my side and now I will leave you with Giuseppe and his presentation hello 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 everyone uh, welcome uh, let's see hopefully many people attending this uh, lecture and let me tell you this lecture was incredibly interesting and somewhat challenging to prepare. Um, when I was researching material on project management and developers, I came across Google and I came across a lot of memes to the point where I found out that maybe I could do a whole lecture, just a whole talk, just by talking about the memes. But um, I've been working as project and product manager for many years now. And especially in the early days, I always had this feeling that project managers and developers tend to be like uh, Batman and Superman. And each one is just saying, let me do my job. And I didn't really understand why. Um, it took me a while to figure out what the causes were, because if you're familiar with the movie, then both Batman and Superman were right. Same as PM and developers, each of them is right in their own area. So I went researching and I went studying especially surveys among European developers and something interesting came up. 47% of developers say that bad project management is their biggest problem. That's a huge number. That is almost one out of two developers, not all project managers, just the bad ones, but it's a, it's a very common problem that they have. And as you can imagine, uh, let me know in the comments in the chat if you, if you can find yourself into this. Too many meetings, keeps asking about estimations, excessive documentation, and obviously obsessed with Jira. So these are the most common complaints that developers have. Then I also went uh, researching about project managers and asking also some of my colleagues, reading online surveys. And there is something interesting on the project management side as well. These are the top three tasks that project managers wish they could stop doing. Number three, we have chasing the team. The project managers really hate when they have to constantly go to developers and asking for estimation, asking for uh, more information because that's just inefficient. And also we really hate to do that. And number two, surprise, surprise, meetings. Uh, project managers hate meetings as much as developers do. The problem is that we are forced to do them sometimes. So this is something that we need to consider. And last but not the least, documentation. We hate documentation, especially when it's redundant or some, sometimes, let's say, useless. So this is interesting, right? We have overlapping problems that developers and project managers share and they just blame each other or they conflict with each other about the same problems. So my question tonight is, what are project managers afraid of? Once we can answer this question, then we can actually find, try to find some solutions, some ways to cope with that. 
And this is a typical photo of a project management staring at Jira at 7 p.m., as some of you may be familiar. And I can narrow it down to three main uh, troubles that project managers have on a day-to-day -day basis. The first one is they don't know when a task is done. This is by far the most commonly asked question to project managers. So product ask them, uh, executives, sometimes customers, everybody wants to know when a task will be done. And this is one of the things that keeps us up at night. The second one is they don't know the status estimation risk challenge of a ticket. Again, it's a lack of information. People expect us to have these answers and sometimes we don't have them. So we have to chase developers. We have to call for meetings to answer these questions. And again, it's, it adds a lot of unnecessary struggle on, on everyone's side. And then they don't know what the developer is currently working on. Again, you asked as a project manager, you asked to be uh, responsible for your team. So the fact that you know that some developers are working on like something that's highly technical and you're not able to kind of report that to the product or to management puts a lot of pressure on us. Um, so I guess before we can answer to the solution, so what is the big idea? What is the mindset that I hope this talk will convey and can spark some discussion later? Approach would be this. The best team happens when a project manager makes everyone's life simpler and when the workers are proactive towards the project management needs. So this means that what we need to aim is the project manager needs to simplify Dev's life and make it as straightforward as possible. Like the less they have to, to use less things, the more efficient the team will be. And the developers should wear the project management hat and provide the information that he or she needs without being overwhelmed. So in today's talk, we're going to analyze three main areas where we can find improvements in our day-to-day -day life as project managers and developers. And the three areas will be Jira. Then we're going to talk about meetings, how to reduce the amount of meetings, how to make existing meetings more effective, and day-to-day -day communication. Communication, it's kind of a common thread in the whole talk. I'm very passionate about um effective communication so you will see hints here and there but i also have a, a couple of more extra tips at the end so let's start with jira and of course when i talk about jira uh i'm talking about any other ticketing systems right so uh most of the principles are the same so feel free to use uh, any GitLab or any any other ticketing system that works for your team or for your project. Uh, most of the concepts that I talk today uh, apply to all of them. I just use Jira because it's simpler and I, I kind of like it the most. So when people look at Jira, they look at Jira in two different ways. They can either see evil Jira or good Jira. Now, evil Jira is when people look at it and this usually happens for developers, and they see it as a kind of a monitoring system that project managers impose on developers in order to have everything under control uh, with a lot of unnecessary work, just, just that the PM can know every single detail, right? So that's a very oppressive Jira, let's call it that way. The good Jira, this is usually how good managers look at it, it's a tool to facilitate the team's day-to-day -day activities by making sure that everybody knows what to do and reduce the amount of necessary meetings. Because if Jira is kind of an ultimate source of truth, then you need less meetings and less information from people. So this is how good project managers look at that. And based on my experience and based on countless discussions over these years, I came up with the five commandments of good Jira. So five rules that I try to follow as much as possible uh, to make everybody's life easier. Starting from commandment number one, who shall reflect all work in Jira. This is crucial. That's why I put it at first. In other words, ticket already didn't happen. 
it's complicated. I know. I know that a lot of times, especially developers, they find small tasks just to be so quick that they don't feel the need. They have a team Jira for that. But what they don't realize is that that work, if it's on track, then project managers has troubles also um, handling that information. You may forget about it. You may not be answer, uh, be able to answer uh, what was done, etc. And we have the same problem as before. As a project manager, you can also involve uh, developers into, into the handling of tickets. For example, uh, in previous project, the, uh, the, some developers, especially one, was working on an internal tool uh, that had nothing to do with product. It was just an internal tool for developers. And I asked him, hey, since you are on the topic, can you just uh, create the tickets yourself? And, and managing them so that uh, it's easier for you to track. And he was very happy to do that. Um, so find a way as project managers to have everything reflected on Jira and as developers try to be as strict as possible in this. Commandment number two, so shall not sleep before updating Jira. Make a habit of updating Jira as the last thing you do before ending your work day. Uh, this is very, uh, simple why it's very easy to understand why one of the first things that happen in mostly every project is the daily in the morning and the project manager one thing that he or she can do is looking at the jira before the meeting and preparing a list of questions or points that he wants to address uh, but if you don't update your jira until the daily or during the daily like i've seen uh happening uh, then the manager cannot make that meet, cannot mm, prepare it, and making the meeting less efficient. So go to sleep before going to sleep. Update Jira tickets, and for project managers, as I just said, who shall check Jira before questions? So project managers make a habit before relevant meetings, especially the daily, uh, look at the Jira tickets and, um, and point out questions. Maybe write down questions that you have uh, for that knowing that hopefully they have Jira updated, otherwise you will be shifted on day of knowledge. Number four, who shall connect Jira to anything useful? Jira has a million different apps that you can connect to. Um, and based on how your project and your team and your organizations are, are structured, uh, you may find a lot of help in connecting Jira to external tools. For example, you can connect it to Slack, uh, and individual developers can have notifications based on, uh, for example, when someone is commenting their tickets or if uh, if the project manager is assigning them a ticket, a task, etc. So, uh, for example, you can connect it to GitHub or any other, other Git system when a pull request is reviewed, pull request is merged, etc. Uh, you can connect it to Figma or other design tools. So. As a project manager, try to uh, find what the best connections would be in your Jira and uh, kind of coach and be uh, sort of a mentoring for, for, the, for the developers to use them, again, to simplify their life. Like the, the end goal of everything is to simplify the developer's life and your own life as well. And last, which is also a bigger point I'm going to cover, is to shut leverage Jira to simplify work. What do I mean by simplify work? We've been already talking on this point many times, but as we saw also, one of the biggest problems that both developers and project management have are estimations and documentation, right? Is managing the tickets from the early backlog all the way to production. So to find a cure for that, again, what are the main problems? with estimations and documentations, because a lot of time is just a blindfolded guessing game. So what are the problems we are trying to solve? Act estimations are asked too soon. Again, I can see many people relate to this. So the ticket is barely described. Hey, we need a new database. How long will it take? How do I know? So accurate estimations are asked too soon. Product has little to no idea about technical complexity of a task, right? So they expect us to be accurate and be um, and, and, and and map timelines and Gunter without um, without first understanding how technical complex something is. Number three, documents are often scattered across different places. This thing drives me nuts. 
Uh, one of the things that complicates everybody's life the most is if they don't have easy access to all the documentation they need for a specific task because it's spread into a million different uh, places, Drive, um, Slack, it's uh, Office, a million different things, and it's very difficult. No clear call to action for developers on what to do. Um, this is super important because developers must wake up in the morning knowing exactly what, what he or she needs to do. And difficult to track life cycles of features. So how do we solve these main problems with Jira in a way that makes it easy, but super structured so that everybody knows exactly what's going on at all times? And I'm going to pose to you the approach that I used uh, that's been working very well. Feel free to customize it uh, in, your, in your own project, in your own boards. But this is um, the, the, the kind of the framework that I've been using quite successfully uh, in the past. And it uses two separate Jira boards. As you know, in Jira, you can create different boards in different projects, and then you can link them to each other. You can link tickets to each other, which is very powerful and very useful. So I have a master board, which is shared with the product team, and a developer board only for developers. And the master board has this column to do, which is the backlog product description, tech description development, then staging or security uh, check, whatever, and then done, which is production. This masterboard tracks the life cycle of a ticket, which means a ticket uh, always uh, lives in this masterboard. How does it work? Say that we want to have a new product needs to, needs to implement a new feature, right? So they create a ticket. Uh, Jira signs them a code, let's say FT52. So they start describing it, they, they put it in the backlog. When they decide to work on it, they uh, write down the idea, they start writing the product documentation, they start writing connecting flows, uh, definition of done, maybe they add some design, and usually they also have a priority, right, as a product, how, how, how prioritized the task should be. As a project manager, this is what I do at this stage. I assign one lead developer. The developer that would be in charge of this ticket, uh, I assign it to this ticket so that he can be responsible for, for example, interacting with product, answering more technical questions that they may have, uh, providing some feedback, some ideas. So he will be one person uh, and not the whole team. He will be one person that is responsible for the ticket interacting with product. He can also ask other developers for help, uh, but he will be the responsible one. The goal, the outcome of this interaction is to have, is to provide product with what's called a t-shirt estimation. So extra small, small, medium, large. So let's say this ticket is medium. This is a very high level estimation, but already serves the purpose that is looking for right now. They want to know how big or how small or how complex the task is. You don't need to be accurate, like this is gonna take 12 days. But this, you know, this is in the range of weeks because we need to we need to have this sort of flows, etc. So this is all product needs in this thing because based on this estimation, they may change the priority. Maybe something that they thought it was very simple uh, is actually very complex, so they want to deprioritize it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once this ticket is ready, I move to tech description, and this is where the lead developers produce another document in the tech description. And as you can see, everything that's happening in this ticket, the product, the design, the data flows, the tech description, everything is linked into this, uh, into this Jira ticket, which means this Jira ticket is the source of truth for everything regarding this task, which means even if the documents are scattered around, all the links will be in this, which is very easy now and in the future for everybody to refer to all the useful information for this ticket. What I do then, once the tech description is ready, and the tech description, I put it in green because I also ask the lead developer to already break it down into actionable tasks. I will ask him to break it down into smaller tasks, which will be the tickets that will go into the developer board and then can be assigned to the individual developers. So once the tech description is ready, I move to development, and this is where you know, we engage uh, the team for, for actually developing it. I usually also here put what version um, this, uh, what version of the platform this will be released on, but this really depends on on how you structure the 
the release cycle. So now I have the tech description. What I do, I go to the developer board and I create an epic. I create an epic with um, the link of the master board ticket. Again, because then every ticket that will be under this epic will be linked to the master ticket and making everybody's, especially developers, life easy. So the tasks based on tech description. And now, and only now, I can ask for somehow accurate estimation, right? So you can use planning poker, you can use any estimation that uh, you, your team are comfortable about, but see that only at this late stage, I give somehow a more detailed estimations, right? I assign the tickets and then things go, uh, as we all know, we merge. When the ticket is merged and tested, then the, the ticket can be considered done, for example, the development environment that we move to staging, QA, end-to-end -end tests, et cetera, et cetera, and the ticket goes to production. So at the end of the day, what I do with this approach is simple. I try to make it so that everybody knows exactly what's going on for every task. Everybody knows what, like, what status it is and what they need to do. And I make it super simple through linking and, document and documentation and linking the epics to things. I make life as easy as possible for developers in their day-to-day life. This is the ultimate soul approach. This said, um, let's jump a bit into meetings because meetings it's a kind of a weird thing uh nobody likes them but they kind of multiply as we go over in our life for reasons that are pretty much unknown to everybody so this is my utopia this is my week uh, when there are before i start scheduling the meetings and this is a week um on a average or below average um work week why does this happen why so many meetings well the problem with meetings is i also call meetings but it can also be like uh jumping into a call on slack or hey can you can you jump in the huddle five minutes to give us a feedback the problem is not only that they are time consuming the problem is that they interrupt uh, people's focus and flow and as we all know it takes about 20 minutes to focus back on a task after an interruption so having calls and meetings during a work day should be seen as something to minimize as much as possible and make as as um, as more effective as possible so this is what i call a healthy life uh, meetings life balance right and there are only three action steps that we can take to to have a healthy meetings life balance we can minimize the need for meetings we can make meetings as effective as possible and we can have a clear follow-up this is super important when meetings end you need to have a clear outcome and follow-up so that you don't have to make new meetings uh, again so how do we achieve this what are some some practical tips that we can that we can use for achieving this? Well, most of them are actually described, um, as we mentioned in the double approach, but as a project manager, what are the things that you can practically do to keep the meetings life balance? First of all, be accurate on where a ticket is and make sure that all information is there. Again, you want to make so that nobody is wondering or nobody is guessing if something is missing, right? Or that they cannot easily access information. When you plan a meeting, you want to write down a clear agenda. Uh, this will help people prepare better for the meeting and come to the meeting uh, more prepared, which means will make the meeting shorter and more to the point. What you want to include into a clear agenda, a link to the documents that everybody should read, a list of points that the meetings will address and the list of questions that you want an answer in this meeting and more than that you also want to have a clear outcome of the meeting discussion about the new database is not an outcome an outcome is something that you can say we achieved this so the meeting was successful or we didn't achieve this, the we need another meeting if you don't have a clear outcome 
it's very unlikely that the, the meeting was successful because then you probably, if it's just a discussion, then it's going to be another discussion meeting and then another discussion meeting, right? So you want a, a very clear outcome that you can say we achieved it, we haven't. Uh, and other things you can do, be firm and cut short if a point is taking too long and schedule a separate call if needed. This is something that happens all the time and is a problem that I had, uh, especially when I was starting. I was noticing that the conversation was kind of going off topic or too much into technical details, for example, and that was not the point of the call. So it was taking too much of everybody's time. But I was a bit afraid. I was a bit intimidated, right? Especially when I was starting, you have all these senior developers that, that tend to talk a lot and get into the rabbit hole of technical conversation when it's not really um, the point of the, on the call. So uh, when I started actually uh, noticing this and got some feedbacks from, from very good senior developers telling me, don't be afraid to, to just interrupt and say, sorry, guys, this is... Uh, not the point, uh, we schedule a separate meeting to address this technical thing. You will see that actually uh, developers will uh, will appreciate that because you're respecting everybody's time and you're sticking to the point. Um, and last but not the least, when a meeting is done, send a recap in a common channel on Slack, right? Uh, it can be enabled, but usually Slack works better in, in our case. Uh, what you do is say, hey, guys, recap of the meeting. We uh, we decided this, 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 and people have to do this, this, and this. The, the point of the recap is so that people can agree or add information. Maybe you, you forgot something. Maybe there was some misunderstanding. Uh, so you clarify the misunderstanding right there, right now, and not drag that um, in the future. And also, everybody knows what to do, what they need to follow up. Uh, you say, hey, Michal and, and, and Chris need to schedule another call for that particular thing of things, right? So the, this, uh, this recap at the end gives you gives also people actionable items um, as a reference. As a developer, all I ask you to do is to wear the PM hat. Put yourself in their shoes, right? So every time we discuss topics, every time we discuss tickets, every time we need to report to product, we always want to know four or five things, right? So be proactive into answering or into providing the project manager answers to four or five points. These points are, as you can imagine, estimations, and we already saw at which point and what kind of estimations we want, resources needed, information needed, risks and challenges. And how we can tackle them or how we can uh, mitigate the risks, for example. So where where the project manager had. Another thing you can do when you discuss with other developers and move forward in the discussion of something, uh, of some tickets, keep the project manager updated. Drop them a message on Slack, say, hey, we discussed this or we're still discussing this thing. Uh, we decided that probably the best solution is this. So keep him in the loop, right? Don't wait for the next meeting because if he doesn't know, maybe he's going to say, oh, let's, let's have a meeting to discuss this thing. Uh, so keep him in the loop. And this kind of sums up what we said so far. Make it easy for project manager to report to management, right? Or to product or whoever um, he needs to report to, right? And as I mentioned before, don't get carried away with technical details. Be very mindful. Uh, very unlikely that in a call where project manager and product and other non-technical people are, it's very unlikely that the conversation should go technical, right? So be aware of that, be, be mindful, and eventually schedule other calls for that purpose. So let me give you just a very quick example of what it means to have a clear agenda versus a not clear agenda. This is an invitation email that, or, or an invitation message that you can send on Slack as a project manager to call up for a meeting, right? So, what are the problems with this email or this Slack message? Title, it's not useful. Meeting preparation doesn't mean really anything. And I'm very curious to read in the comments if you find yourself or you received uh, such invitations. I schedule a meeting next week to discuss the implementation of new database in our system. This is too vague, right? Discussing about something, uh, again, there is no clear outcome. Uh, what, what, what's the point of this meeting? Discussion can happen in many different forms. 
Please review this document, and I'll link the document here before the meeting, and let me know if you have any comments or inputs. Put like that, and I guarantee you that at least half of the people receiving this will not read the document until the last moment and definitely not send any comments or input until it's very late. Uh, so what we can do, we can write the same exact thing, but in a more focused and straightforward way. The title, feedback needed on new database implementation. Boom, this is, a, this is already the big idea behind the meeting. I need a feedback on this thing. We need to implement the new database as described in this ticket with high priority. And I link the master board ticket, very important. Again, I make it easy. People click there and they have access to all information that they need to know about what the topic of the, of the meeting will be. Make people's life easy. I schedule a meeting next week to address all pending points and move to tech description. This is the outcome. The meeting will be successful if the pending points are addressed and I can confidently move the ticket to tech description which means we don't need any more input from product. We have all we need to write the tech description. So if I can do that, the meeting will be successful. If I cannot, probably we'll need another meeting. Again, I ask you to review this document and I link it. By no later than Friday, add recommendation and identify stuff that needs to be changed. Again, I give a very specific time before Friday and I say exactly what they need to do. This is pretty much the same even as before. I just be, I'm much more specific and I'm much more straightforward on what people need to click, where they need to go, what we need to do, what we want to achieve to the, for the meeting. So again, how you frame these things is super important. A top uh, extra things that I found very useful is agreeing on a no-call zone across the whole organization. This is not just the development team. This is with the pro team. This is with higher management. Uh, you should aim to have some slots during the day when no calls are allowed, except if it's a, um, except if it's an emergency. Uh, why this works very well? Because then you can concentrate all the calls, for example, in the morning, and then at one time you know that your calendar will almost always be free unless there is something very urgent, uh, and then you can do all your focus work there. As we know, many meetings and many interruptions kind of kill your focus. So try also not to. Um, do that too much, but from my experience, for example, in the afternoon, after one, after two p.m., uh, that's a reasonable, uh, that's a reasonable no-call zone. But again, this needs to be shared and agreed by everybody in the organization, not just you and your team. Last point for today: we talked a lot about communication, right? Uh, as you can see, um, I, I put a lot of strain into having clear, no bullshit straight to the point communication, but there are also some extra tips that I like and I found make my life easier. And um, the first one regards daily. Keep daily meetings as short as possible. Daily meetings is usually the first thing that happens in the morning and it's very useful, most of the team do. But especially as a developer, because there are many of you and only one project manager, but everybody in a daily meeting should think themselves as Nicolas Cage in Gone in 60 Seconds. You need to aim Gone in 60 Seconds, which means you need to be very mindful and you need to practice and you need to be um, aware of how much time you need to, to give your update in the morning. What I recommend is 30 seconds, what you did yesterday, 30 seconds, what you will do today, and an optional 30 seconds if you need help. So this is literally what the daily is for. The daily, apart from giving a status update, but that can be easily done um, via Slack or even updating Jira, as we mentioned, um, but it's also a way to, to find if someone is working on something that you may help with, you may need some connections, but don't discuss stuff in daily. As we said, just say, um, I'm gonna need, mm, Carol, help in um, in this database thing. Uh, let's stay after the call and discuss it, right? So be very very mindful. Aim for sixty plus thirty seconds, and um, the the all the team will be happy with that. And the very last point I want to touch is what I call the Slack etiquette. And there are three things that can make your day take communication in Slack just so much better and more effective. And also there are some things that kind of uh, 
I say piss me off, but make me come some somehow sometime annoyed by the inefficiency of them. The first one is don't just write hello. How many of you hate this thing? Someone writes you hi or hello, and then nothing else, right? So until you write hello back, they don't they don't write. Uh, uh, one time I had this this person. He used to do this, write hello, and then nothing else anymore until I, I write it back. I tried to not reply for like I was maybe three hours or four hours, and still no 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 reply. Then the moment I write hello back, then he starts writing to me. So that's so one. If you just write hi, I need your help with something. Can you help me? Whatever. Just don't say just hello. The second thing again, I can uh, probably. All of them, all, all the people here can relate. Don't just write five words per line. Like, don't be this person. You have no idea how long it is that I keep getting notification. Pum, 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 pum. It's like, hi, I was thinking, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. and each one is a notification on my side, right? So that is not only annoying, but also makes communication much more difficult because I don't know when you're done and I can write. Because I write something, but you keep writing. Uh, and then you're replying to my old one. It it just such a inefficient way of communicating. So just write long messages, use bullet points, uh, make communication much easier. And last but not the least, I find it very very useful to use um, Slack statuses, right? So uh, I would use, for example, focus more away or do not disturb. Or um, I connect the the Google Calendar to Slack so people know when I'm in the meeting. Uh, all these things, if you if you agree with your with your team and and everybody respects them, then you 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 facilitate right because you can write to someone you say oh he's busy be better not disturb him now he's gonna answer me later or whatever. So these things just for a more healthier uh, day to day communication on Slack and. Um, I think now it's time to thank you all and answering if there are any questions. So I would probably summon you still again and read some of the comments. You still are you with us? Oh, you're muted. Yeah, again. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we have uh, one comment, but that was uh, about uh, about communication and about cut it uh, communicates. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess that uh, many people uh, can say about themselves that uh, they sometimes try it like that. Mm, so yeah, if there is no other question, uh, I think uh, we're coming to an end. So uh, let's wait. Uh, let's wait a few seconds more. Uh, and for now, thank you, Giuseppe. It was very, very interesting uh, presentation, Thanks. and uh, I, I think that many of us can um, could learn something uh, from it. So. Um, Okay, um, more information about, uh, about us. If you want to um, check our articles, um, for example, uh, the one from Giuseppe, uh, we, have, um, we have the section uh, on our website, so you can uh, see there more uh, interesting um, content. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, we're gonna end this meeting. Uh, of course, uh, you will have this uh, uh, this webinar saved on our YouTube channel. So if you want to get back here, uh, there will be no problem um, to rewatch it. Okay, thanks again. Uh, thanks for your participation and see you uh, during next uh, webinars. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.